Welcome into the Junior Hockey News Podcast. I'm your host, Devin Panzika. Joining the show today is a player in the NCDC. He plays for the Ogden Mustangs. Welcome in, Cooper Fink. Cooper, how are you doing today? Good. Thanks for having me. Uh, glad you can make the time. Uh, you're, you're up in Ogden. How's your year started? Yeah, it's been fun. It's been it's been a great start to the year. We got uh we've had a good core group of guys that uh you know started the year here and um definitely bought in right away and then we've added uh bits and pieces along the way that have helped. Yeah, I believe you guys are at the top of your conference right now. It's the new NCDC conference. What are your thoughts so far uh with the new conference and and your team as a as a whole? Yeah, it's been uh it's been awesome out here. Um, ever since starting out here, it's been great. Um, most of the fan bases are amazing. Um, the, the talent level is a lot better than expected, I think, by everyone's standpoint um, to start. You know, I mean, a lot of the guys that, that are in kind of this pool of the NCDC level um, kind of look at it and say, why not go play in front of 5,000 fans a night, like compared to out east, you know. Um, so it's growing. Um, every week, it seems like teams are getting better and better. So it's been great um we're, we're treated very well it's definitely been a cool exper experiment to watch kind of from the outside obviously last year they were in the usphl premiere and you know they they knew where they were going up and their fan bases have have been quite good so i was really interested to see the players they would be able to draw and how good the competition would be because there's not a lot of teams or divisions that you know have those fan bases in the u.s and in junior hockey so i, I thought it could be a really cool really cool thing for this first year. Yeah, for sure. And it, it seems like it's growing a lot. I mean, ever since the start of the year, every time we go on a away game, the fan bases just get better and better. Our home base, you know, we're getting more fans every night and games are getting more intense and it's been a lot of fun. How is that from, so last year, we'll take a little step back and kind of go into your transition into junior hockey. Um, what made you decide that you wanted to take the junior hockey route? Yeah, I mean, I've I've always played hockey my whole life. I've always known I've been super passionate about it. It's kind of been everything I've done as a kid. And I think I, I probably knew probably sophomore year of high school is when I, I kind of sat down with my family and we decided that I was going to take this seriously. And and I think ever since then, I knew I was going to play juniors or at least play after high school. Nice, nice. And then so what made you so where did you start the year last year? Obviously, you were, you bounced around quite a bit. Can you take us through your kind of journey through last season? Yeah. So obviously, you know, coming into coming into juniors, it's there's a lot of decision making. Um, you sometimes you don't know exactly what level you're at, where you should play. Um, luckily, I went to a I was at some showcase in um, Janesville, Wisconsin, just in spring, and I got in touch with this team in Canada, the Camera Fighting Walleye. Um, and, uh, they were, they were pretty heavy on me throughout the summer, which kind of drew me in and I started the year off there and it was a great spot. I loved all the guys there. loved the coaches, um, great team. They ended up going to nationals that year. Um, still talked to a lot of the guys, uh, a lot of guys moved down to good spots. Um, but it just, it's one of those things where I, I don't think I was mentally and physically ready to endure a full year of juniors. Mm -hmm. I'm just coming into a blind. It was probably a, a good blessing in disguise for me hindsight um ended up getting traded there in early november um i just i wasn't producing where i needed to be started off hot and just couldn't keep it going just the day to day i just couldn't wasn't taking as seriously as i probably should have and i i got traded to another team in canada um didn't didn't work out there wasn't wasn't too happy there mm -hmm. um then luckily i got got a chance to go to boston the ncdc um, after Christmas, I mm. um, decided that was probably what's best for me. Just try to get a fresh start. And that, uh, that was really an eye opener for me getting there. Uh, I knew I had the skill and everything to play. I just, I wasn't in the right, right state mentally or physically to, to be an impact in the lineup there. Um, and I think that really kind of remotivated me throughout mm. the summer to, to get to spot I'm at now. Gotcha. So, so when you made that move over to Boston, was, were you kind of on like a, a two-way deal with the USPHL and the NCDC, or how did that kind of work out? Because I saw you had a few games kind of in both on both teams. Yeah, I I originally they just they they were pretty good at just trying to get guys uh, games either way. Like if I was scratched one day in the DC and there's a prem game, like I'd go play prem. Gotcha. Uh, but 
I, I say I, I was out there more to play NCDC, but yeah. obviously I was struggling with confidence and stuff. And so I, they had me play a couple of premier games. Was it a pretty big jump when you'd go up and down between the premier and the NCDC? Could you notice it like as soon as you touch the ice? What, what were oh, some yeah. of the differences between, you know, the NCDC and the premier? Uh, just the speed. I mean, I mean, guys just, just skating with the puck and, and how everything's um, system wise, probably a little bit better. Like just a lot faster uh, plays develop a lot faster. If you get caught flat footed, it's going to hurt you. Um, but I mean, I'd say natural skill level probably isn't too far off. It's just, I guess from the top end of premier, probably um, it's just decision-making and speed. Mm-hmm. Is, is definitely the big difference yeah that, that makes a lot of sense so then going going forward into this year uh, i just wanted to talk a little bit about um like advising so you you got an advisor joe quoje with hockey talent management uh, how did you go about finding finding him and what was kind of the process or your thinking behind wanting to get an advisor yeah so i uh i just it kind of got to one of those points where where i was uh not sure what the next step for me was and I mean, I think everyone knows in hockey, there's a hundred different paths. So then getting an advisor really, really kind of helps you and settles you down a little bit and um, can kind of tell you right from wrong in certain spots. And so, uh, yeah, Joe's been nothing but great, especially out here at the Ogden. He, he wanted me to come out here and, and yeah, it's been great so far. So what was kind of your process to getting to Ogden? Did you have to go through the whole camp process or was it more of an expedited process? Um, yeah, so I was talking to a couple NCDC teams as Boston folded last year. So all of us that still had eligibility were free agents. Um, so I got in contact with a couple NCDC teams and then, uh, got in contact with, uh, coach Orlando over here. And I think right away, I think he kind of clicked with me a little bit more than anyone else. Um, and I knew, especially coming from Canada last year, um, kind of how much better it is to have an actual junior experience playing in front of fans and you know, all the bus trips and just, just the whole, the whole deal. So I knew I kind of wanted to come out West, just get a full fresh start. And uh, I was just talking to a couple of teams out here and then I was going to come out to camp um, and just, I was actually going to come to two or three main camps on my way out here. Um, mm-hmm. Just to kind of see, see where I like the best. And I actually came to Ogden for one day and I tendered that night. Oh, nice. So, yeah, so was that a really good first day of camp or? What was kind of the problem? They're like, come out here and, you know, what, we just want to take a quick look at you and, you know. Yeah, I think, it, I think it kind of went both ways. I mean, I was definitely weighing in my options. I had a couple other tender offers, but I never actually got one from Ogden until I came out here. Mm-hmm. Um, and I got one after the first first scrimmage game. But um, the coaches were great. The guys were so much fun. Um, the whole staff was so welcoming, even just for main camp. Um, where, it's a great you- did you go to Ogden's actual home facilities for that uh, camp or where was the camp yeah. at? Yeah, we were out here in Utah. Yeah, so that, that probably helps sell it when you see those those beautiful Absolutely. facilities and, you know, you see the mountain right out right out the window and you're like, oh, this this could be a pretty pretty sweet place. Yeah. To play. yeah, it's not too bad. It's pretty fun. And, I mean, like, it was crazy. Like, for the main camp All-Star game, they had, like, 600 fans in the stands. Wow. That's like, it was, it, was, it was bizarre. Yeah, that that's awesome. I mean, I I played uh, them probably five, eight years ago now. I don't even know how long it's been. It's been before I went to college, obviously. And uh, you know, we played them in the finals one year, and you know, they was absolute packed barn and yeah. absolute. It's it's, a, it's an insane place to play, and I'm sure you're having a blast um, playing there. And especially, it's even more fun when your team's so successful and winning yeah. so much. What what do you think goes into that overall team success? Do you think it's the, the players they were able to bring in and able to recruit? How's the coaching? How's your practice? What's your day-to-day life look like? Yeah, so I think overall our team, I think, you know, coming into training camp, we just, we bonded so fast. I mean, our core group of guys, we bonded so quick and we bought in very fast. Um, and then the, the bits and pieces we brought along the way have just been great additions. Our coaching staff does a great job at, um, bringing in guys that are going to fit the right pieces. And, and I think most importantly for them is how you're going to be in the locker room with our team, spend a lot of time together. Um, we're a really tight, tight group, which I think more than anything probably helps, especially when you're in a league that, that, uh, I'd say rosters fluctuate a lot. Like when you have one core group, it helps a lot against, against teams that haven't been together long. 
Um, our, our coaching staff does an awesome job as well, um, keeping us battling all week. Very intense practices, um, always battling. It's a lot of fun. Keep it a good atmosphere to where, you know, we're not trying to kill each other, but it gets pretty competitive and it's always fun. How would you say, how would you say the, the NCDC uh, West compares to your old conference? Uh, is there a big difference? Is it more physical, more skill? How, how do you think it, is it pretty similar overall? Um, I honestly coming out here, I didn't really know what to expect. That was going to be kind of a drop down to start at least. And uh, to be honest, it hasn't been, especially mm -hmm. the top four teams in our division are great teams. We would have done great in the East last year when I played. Um, but the biggest difference I think is just this, the structure. It's a lot more structured out here. Um, you know, it, it's a lot more physical, probably, you know, you got your top two lines of scores, you got your bottom lines of guys, you know what to do, like a lot more structure. Um, it's a lot more intense as well. I think, uh, I think, you know, playing Friday and Saturday nights in front of big crowds, you know, it does add a difference. Yeah. I mean, when you're out to Idle Falls and you're playing in front of 5,000, it's going to be a lot different than, than, you know, playing out East in front of nobody. Um, like, I think that adds a lot of, a lot of difference too, but but to be honest, like the team, the skill level and everything is not much different at all. Yeah, no, I get that. I mean, definitely the intensity whenever there's a big crowd is going to intensify. I remember I was playing in Amarillo in the North American League where, you know, we get a few thousand fans a night and they're all crazy and fired up. And then I moved over to the Eastern Hockey League and we'd play on noon on a, on a, on a Sunday. Yeah. There was, parents weren't even showing up. So it was, you know, it's it's not necessarily hard to get up for the games, but it's just like, the level of excitement is just is just not there. So I think that different that, that's level for sure. Yeah, I think that adds a great um great great level of marketing too. Absolutely. How is um so obviously the goal or I first I should start. What are, what are your goals? Um, so you have this season and one season left, correct? After yeah, you, I'm actually I'm I'm hoping to to get some D three looks for next season. Okay. Um, my last season if possible but if not I, I wouldn't mind coming back here so you're so why do you why are you looking to leave potentially before your age out season just uh just kind of at that point where I kind of just want to get into schooling and you know get my life started in that aspect um I think you know obviously there's an outside chance you're playing tier two you could get a division one look but uh, I think most likely I'll end up playing division three um mm -hmm. hopefully back home or in Wisconsin or Minnesota, there's some a lot of really good options. So I think just uh, getting into it a year early would would be good for me. I think uh, I think the way I play and and kind of my role, I think I think will stay the same throughout these next two years of juniors. And I think I could go play Division three with this role that I'm in um, and do well. So I think for me, hopefully, that's what I what I can achieve and get in Division three next year. But if not, I wouldn't mind coming back here. Yeah, it it is tough with Division Three because they look for older players. They want they want yeah, those age outs, you know, especially in the WIAC and the MIAC where, you know, they're it's a battle every night there, and the conferences are so good. So, but obviously you're coming from a good spot, and you're you you know your role and what you you know what you have to do to get there. So that that always um, that always helps for sure. How have how have um, have you noticed like scouts in the building? Has have a lot of your teammates? Have you been getting talked to a lot by scouts at these games? Because obviously, if it's if you're in Utah. It's not necessarily a hockey hotbed for colleges. That's the one you know maybe disadvantage of not playing in Boston, where there's you know sixty schools within you know a fifty mile radius. Have you noticed the difference there? Yeah, um, the difference is, is, you know, obviously in Boston, you got all those D3 schools. And so they're always in the stands um, every game. But uh, I was actually, I was hurt um, for a weekend at the start of the year here. And so I was in the stands and got to see some pretty, some pretty big name schools and teams that I wasn't really expecting, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, but, but yeah, it's obviously there's a lack of scouts actually watching, but our division, especially, they take such a pride in how our uh, our video is for games and the broadcast. And um, obviously, you know, guys are getting talked to a lot. There's there's a lot of eyes on us, especially new division. Um, our coaching staff does an amazing job at, you know, getting us out there. And um, so I know a lot of guys are getting looks they want, and we got a lot of eyes on us. That's for sure. Yeah, that's that's awesome. Maybe not physically in the stands.
Yeah, but, uh, with the technology of cameras and if your team is willing to, you know, invest in it, like that makes a big deal because teams don't have the budget to be flying out, especially Division Three teams. A lot of Division One teams will have the budget, um, but Division Three teams won't have that budget to fly out every every weekend. And um, they obviously have their own games to play as well. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, especially having a, a new division, I remember uh, when back in my junior days when Northeast Generals, I, I was there their inaugural year and I was, oh, a, yeah. A decent, yeah, I was a decently high draft pick there. So I, I, I was, you know, pretty excited and I got a call in the summer for, from BU just because <laughs> it was a new division and yeah. a new team. So they were like, oh, we just want to check out and see what's going on in our, in our neighborhood. So we figured we'd give you a call just, just so you're on the radar, yeah. even though I had no business ever getting a call from, from BU. <laughs> yeah. It's got to pump your tires a little bit, eh? Yeah. That, that, that one did feel good. Uh, that was, that was, that was a good summer for me for sure. But, uh, but yeah, I bet. But yeah. So, uh, how, how does the, how do you feel the rest of the season is going to go? Do you think you guys are going to continue down this path that you guys have have set for yourselves i i sure hope so i mean we i think the thing that just separates us apart is just our compete mm -hmm. um you know obviously we took a night off i guess from the compete level uh two weeks ago at our first first regulation loss and i want to say eight or nine games something like that mm -hmm. uh, and i think it was a big eye opener we definitely had our hardest week of practice guys were battling pretty hard and then came out last week and then had a pretty good sweep so i think uh, i think Especially, we have a lot of rookies, a lot of younger guys that, you know, haven't seen a full year of juniors yet. And that uh, I think, especially at this level, you got to come every night. I mean, every team's good. Um, even the bottom end teams, like they still have guys that can play. They still have guys that can put the puck in the net. Um, so I think we just, as long as we, we keep working week in and week out, I think we'll be all right. So you, you mentioned kind of your role and knowing what role you are. Can you kind of explain your role, what you do best, and what you've been working on to, you know, make your goals happen of becoming a Division three player, hopefully next season? Yeah, I think uh, I think I've changed the way I've played completely. Um, I I think my biggest thing I think on this team is definitely my penalty kill. Um, I've penalty killed a lot, killed a lot of penalties. We're a pretty aggressive team, um, so I, I do that a lot. But also I've been playing, I'd, I'd say, probably more in the middle six and just, you know, trying to help for my teammates, get them in space and wear down other teams' defensemen. Uh, I think the biggest thing that I've tried to be is just the word reliable. Mm. It's just you know, my coach can put me out in any situation. I'll be there um, playing hard in the D zone. I've really, really kind of put forward a, an effort to, to be great in the D zone this year, um, really buy into the systems and just kind of play what's asked of me. Yeah, I mean, that's that's definitely a good thing that, you know, you realized your role early on in the season. So, you know, a lot of kids, you know, if they're not getting, you know, power play minutes or if they're not putting up a point per game, you know, they might get frustrated. But you knowing what role you are makes your coach's life a lot easier and is going to make sure that, you know, you're, you're in a good – where he knows that he could trust you and you're going to be that reliable player that you're going to get a lot of minutes that you might not have gotten if – you were just trying to be, you know, a skill guy or something that, that might not necessarily be. Yeah, I think I, I learned that a lot my first year is just uh, started off hot last year. I think, you know, we went in preseason, we played a lot of SJ and MJ teams and I was I was lighting it up. And then once I got into the regular season, I, you know, hit a little rough patch. And for a lot of rookies, it's pretty tough when you haven't played juniors before. You're playing, you know, two nights a week, uh, especially coming from a 24 game high school schedule like it's a lot different. Um, so when you, confidence is a big thing, especially in juniors. Like, it's it's tough when you hit a rough patch. And so I think, I think knowing this coming into my second year, I think it's made it a lot easier. Yeah, no, that's, that's definitely crazy. trying to help out others on my team that are going through it. I've tried my best to help everyone out, and you know, especially the guys that come in exactly like me last year. You know, we got a couple guys that started off really hot in preseason training camp, and then you know another guy comes in, bumps you down a little bit. It's tough. And so I think our team, especially the guys who have played juniors before have been unbelievable to, uh, to some of the other guys. And I think everyone's kind of caught their footing a little bit, which has been good to see. Yeah. That is, that is one of the tough parts about juniors is the rosters are so fluid. Like you could be, you know, fifth, sixth forward one week and then 
you know, they bring in a guy or two and now you're on the third line and you're not getting that ice time and you're not getting those points. You get frustrated and, you know, things kind of snowball down from there. So that, that's, that's not a good situation, but, uh, but thanks so much for, you know, making the time and hopping on with us. Um, no, thanks for having me. Really excited to see how, how you and Ogden do the, the rest of this year. I think you guys are going to have a lot of success. You know, it's a great place to play and, you know, it seems like you guys are building a great culture, you know, your first year in the league and, They've, they've had a winning tradition for a long time, um, obviously in a few different leagues. And now I think making this step to the NCDC, they're going to be able to recruit some just amazing players. And I think maybe not necessarily this season, but in the coming seasons, it's going to be, you know, an NCAA hotbed with, you know, Absolutely. players are going to want to be there. You know, why play, like you said, in, in a small market where you have no one there when you could play in Idaho and have 5,000 fans. So I think they're going to be able to start recruiting some of the best players in the, in the country. And I think it's only going to be up from there. So I think it's, you're in a great spot having gotten there early, and, you know, secured your role. And uh, yeah, we just wish you a lot of success and uh, we'll definitely have to keep in touch and, and make sure everything goes. Uh, thanks. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you.